verse 20. Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, beginning in verse. betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink his of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. <coughs> the word of God is blessed. Father, thank you for your holy word. We were so keenly, explicitly reminded in our Sunday school lesson today that the only the way we can have victory over the enemy and the evil one is through the power of your word. Yes, yes. Help us to have a healthy appreciation for your holy word. Yes, and I pray now for fresh anointing to preach your word, yes. not for form nor for fashion, but God, to the end, someone would hear the word and have a desire to want to establish a relationship with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. I think it's the second Sunday in October that it's known as Communion Sunday on the Christian calendar all, right. all over the world. And I just thought it strange that they would select Communion to evidence the un unity of the Christian church. 
When if one thing among the Christian church is different, that is the communion. Some folk use real wine. Y'all know about Mary Shelley's too. <laughs> Some churches use real wine when they do communion. Some do it on first Sundays. Some do it on second Sundays. Some third fourth. There's no every real, Sunday. real systematic unity right. of how communion or coming to the Lord's table is carried out. Oh, oh, oh. Some, when you have communion, you go to some churches, the priest will stand there, you get in the line and march yeah. up, and That's right. you don't touch nothing. He put the bread in your mouth and, 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 and give you the cup. You don't touch anything. Some, some churches, uh, they drink from the same cup. Yeah. Mama told me don't drink after that. But there's so many different ways that communion is carried out. Some call it Eucharist. Some call it communion. Some call it the Lord's Supper. There seems to be no unity among the things that's supposed to unify us as the church. But I'm so glad, despite the way that we exercise this Christian practice, a Christian discipline, there is some unity. Because Jesus said, whenever you do it, you do it in remembrance. Am I right, somebody? Yes. Yes. Do this in remembrance of me. So whenever the Christian church, no matter who it is, which denomination or which faith, no matter who it is that does it, there is similarity or the sameness in two things. The message that is proclaimed, amen, and also the, the, the meaning of the message, it means the same. Are y'all with me so far? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the same in terms of the proclamation in terms of what it's about. Well, you go into any any church, Christian church, and if they have the communion table, it's going to say the same thing. Do this in remembrance of me. Am I right, anybody? <laughs> Do this in remembrance of me. And so, the, the unity is when we have communion, we're proclaiming something and we are remembering something. Amen. What are we remembering, Pastor? We're remembering the life, the death, the burial, and the, resurrection. the resurrection, and the soon return of the Lord Jesus. He says, often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you'll remember my death until I come again. Now, now, I know some of us think that communion, communion Sunday is just some tradition or religious thing. 
some of the religions that we use. But we do this because Jesus said do it. Amen. Amen. And we do it because if we don't do it, we will forget well, what this thing is all about. Yeah. What, what was the message? What was the message? What, really, what was the message? We'd have to go back to that first communion. Yeah. And see clearly what the message is about. Now, I, I ain't going to speak to you from Matthew's gospel. All of the synoptic gospels talk about the communion, the Lord's Supper. All three of them. But they all three have some distinctives about them. Mark and Matthew emphasizes and talk about when Jesus sat at the table, conversation came up. And the conversation was about a betrayal. Yeah. They talk about who was going to betray Jesus. Yeah. Amen. They talk about the betrayal, the betray, but the, but the betrayed, but the, mm, let me go. <laughs> Talked about the betrayed, but not the betrayer. Now that's in, that's interesting, y'all. And I hope I can help you see that it's interesting today. Jesus said in the text that uh, let me hold the door. Somebody sitting at this table with me yeah, yeah, yeah. is going to betray me. Matter of fact, he said, it's the one that dippeth with, dippeth with me in the dish. Now, that really didn't distinguish any one person. Because this was the kind of supper that uh, everybody somewhere along the line was going to put their hand in the dish. Because it was one of those, those family settings where, you know, you, you know, you, yeah, everybody was eating and, and getting their portion or whatever they wanted to eat out of the various bowls. So it didn't mean anything to the rest of the disciples. And, and what I'm saying about that and why it's important is because Jesus talked about being betrayed, but he did not talk about the betrayer. Uh, right, right. He never revealed who was going to betray him. Never did. Now, I thank God for that. I know. And the reason I thank God for that is because there's some things Jesus just don't reveal to other folks. And I thank God for that. And y'all ought to thank God for that. Yep. Keep that he don't honesty. reveal everything about you. Y'all, 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 there's some things about me that's not been revealed. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I'm glad that God doesn't reveal everything about us. He could have told them it was Judas. He knew exactly who it was was going to betray him. But he never called his name. Thank God. Amen. Didn't call his name. Mm -hmm. He also allowed Judas to be seated at the table. Yeah. 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 Now some of us wouldn't let him sit at the table. Well, well, yeah. We'd have known who he was, he wouldn't have sat at that table. Yeah. <laughs> because some of us would say he was unworthy. Right. Right. He was a sinner. Now, when Jesus said to them, one of you going to betray you, they all begin to say, Lord, yeah. is it I? Yeah. Am I going to do it? Even Judas said, it is I. Ju Ju Judas did not realize the ramification of the sin he had committed. And Judas didn't think he was so bad. 
Give you a little history lesson. Judas, being part of the disciples, came from a different part of the country than any rest of the disciples. And, and, and the, the Jews from that part of the country was really looking for the Messiah to overthrow the Romans. And the Romans, they were really looking for Jesus, the Messiah, to deliver them. And the reason Judas didn't think he had done wrong, Judas thought he was opening a door for Jesus to prove who he was. He didn't think he'd done nothing really wrong. In mm -hmm. fact, he thought he'd done something good. Yeah. But was setting Jesus up to manifest his power. Uh, Some of you all don't realize how destructive your sins are. <laughs> Some of us think we're all right when they're just little sins. But I got news for you today. All sin is sin in the sight of God. There's no big sin and there's no little sin. But it's all to God. Help me out here, Paul. All have sin and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. Matter of fact, John put it this way. If anybody say he don't have no sin, he's a lie in the truth of it. Some of us don't think we're all that bad because we don't do the quote unquote the big sin. Um, but the little sin is just as bad as the big sin as man declares them in the sight of God. And so God looks at Judas different than the way we would look at Jesus. Yeah, we would bar him from the table. See, in the Baptist church, they used to, when they had communion, when it got time for communion, everybody who wasn't a member of the church got up and went out. They had to leave. You wasn't a member of that church, you had to get up and leave. Huh? But thank God some things change. In light of who God is and his word, some things change. Judas, as far as the people was concerned, didn't have no business being seated at the table as a betrayal of Jesus. But listen, some of you all ain't got no business at the table. Some of you all don't have any business at the table of the husband you got. Some of you ain't got no business at the table in terms of the wife that you got. Some of us don't have any business at the table in terms of our financial status. Help me somebody. If it were not for the grace of God. Oh, I know we think we all that, but if it were not for the grace of God, none of us would be at the table. Or could eat at the table. But thank God for the broken bread and the spilled blood of Jesus Christ. Because of his grace and mercy. Yes, it was grace that woke us up this morning. It didn't have anything to do with how good we are or what we have. It was because of the mercy and the grace of God that we are alive and set here right now. We have no business here. We have no business with some of the blessings that we have. We have no business condemning other people. So if it wasn't for the grace of God, we wouldn't be here. Am I right, somebody? Thank God for his grace. Thank God he looked beyond my faults. And the soul, my need. Yeah, yeah, Jesus, Jesus didn't reveal who it was. He talked about the betrayal, but he did not talk about the betrayer. Did not point him out. Well, that was a message that the church proclaims when it comes to the communion. And uh, I want to give you four points quickly. I'm not going to try to expand them, but I want to just give you one of the points. 
talk about this for a little bit. See, when Jesus had the first communion, he, uh, he told some of the disciples, Matthew recorded, that uh, he, knew, he knew this was the last time they were going to be together before he died. Yeah. And he told, told the disciples, go find us a place where we can be in private yeah. so I can have a conversation with you. And, 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 and they went and found a place and they all ended up in the upper room. And that's why Jesus began to talk to them and to tell them some things about his life and about his soon coming death. But there was something he wanted them to know before he left. And all of the gospel writers reveal this. Number one, he wanted them to be a caring community. He wanted them to behave after he left the way he behaved. He wanted us to behave the way he behaved while he was here. Amen. And Jesus was a caring person. Amen. John talks about it even. John chapter 13. Jesus said, the way folk are going to know you belong to me is because you have love one for all. A caring community is concerned about each other. Yeah. Meet the needs of each other. Yeah. And if you're close enough as God wants us to be, uh -huh. folks don't always tell you when they got problems. Well, well. You ought to be able to recognize some stuff. If you are a caring community, not only do you care about the folk inside the church. Well. But you care about folk outside. Amen. Amen. You know, as I was meditating upon this thing and I was thinking about myself, I thought about how bad senior people just need somebody to help them with their medicine. Right. Just to help them to know when and how much medicine they should take. And y'all think that, oh, that ain't nothing. But I told my wife, I said, you know what? If it were not for you, I said, these, some of these problems I had probably done took me out of here. Because I, I couldn't be that consistent and persistent about taking that medicine I have to take. I'd be missing it, Brother King. I take some some days, some days I miss it. <laughs> Some days I remember to take it and some days I wouldn't. So it's just a major thing that some people leave this world because they were not taking their medicines the way they were supposed to. And so a caring community could really be a help to some senior person just to help them take the medicine. It's so sad to go to those nursing homes. And see those people just sitting there. Yeah. Nobody coming to see them. Right. Just sitting there, withering away. Because nobody cares about them. Listen, Jesus died that we might be a caring community. Yeah. Help me somebody. Yeah. He said, how do we have the love of God in you if you see your brother or sister have a need and you shut up your vows of compassion when you have the resources to help them. Shame on us! It would mean so much for you just to take a few minutes out of your daily schedule or weekly schedule and go visit somebody. Amen. Amen. Just go tell them and have a prayer with them. Yeah. Yeah. It would mean so much. We are supposed to be a caring community. And not just focused on ourselves. If Jesus had been focused on himself, he would have never come in the first place. Never. But not only that, not only that, uh, we are to we are to recognize some other stuff. We we are to recognize that we are uh, we are broken but blessed. Yeah. All of them talk about Jesus took the bread. Yeah. 
and he broke it. Yeah. And Jesus said, this is my body, yeah. which is broken for you. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Wow. He was talking about his death on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if we are followers of Christ, we're going to have to suffer sometimes. Yeah. 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 No, you don't have to do anything. Just because you're part of the family of God, mm -hmm. somebody will criticize you on your job. Right. Yeah. Somebody will run down your name, tell a lie on you right. on your job. Right. But I heard Peter say, think it not strange. Yeah. Yeah. Think it not a strange thing concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. Yeah. Some of us can't handle nothing. Some of us look at us cross-eyed. So thin-skinned that we can't handle nothing. But Jesus said that, uh, well, well, Paul put it in his term, he said we are persecuted, but we are not the same. We are cast down, but we are not destroyed. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sister. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sylvia, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so we're troubled on every side. Right. Yet we're not distressed. Right. Why do we not have to be distressed? Someone said a long time ago, fret not yourself. Right. Because of evil doers. They, they soon will be cut out and wither away as the green grass. Or the green grass. They're going to perish. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You follow Jesus. You said, if you suffer with me, you'll reign with That's me. That's what he said. That's what he said. If you don't go through nothing for his sake, there ain't no need you looking for nothing. That's right. That's right. We're broken, but we get blessed. I don't care what condition you are in today in this sanctuary. I don't care what you're going through, what crisis you're dealing with. You are yet blessed. Amen. You're blessed right now. Amen. Sitting up here with a frown on your face, and you got a portion of health and strength. A portion of health and strength. Some folk would give anything to be able to come out to the church today. Amen. What a blessing. Yeah. Blessing to have a portion of health and strength. What a blessing to be in our right mind. We were able to drive ourselves yeah. to church today. Yeah. We were able to clothe ourselves. Yeah. You know something we oftentimes forget about? We forget about the blessing of being able to taste our food. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of folk eat and don't taste nothing. Matter of fact, because they can't taste it, they chew it and chew it and chew it. Trying to get some nourishment, but they can't taste their food. What a blessing to be able to eat and taste what you eat. Thank you, Jesus. Humorously speaking, I had to cut back on the salt. Yeah, and I love salt. I told my wife one day, if I can't have no salt, I just might go and not eat no more. There was no salt, the food seemed tasteless. But I just need to get adjusted. I just need to get adjusted. My taste buds. I don't want to stop smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever smoke cigarettes yeah. and stop? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You remember how many pounds you gained when you stopped? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Food tasted so good. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. These cigarettes did? Yes. yes. Cigarettes killed our taste buds. Yes. We couldn't taste food. That's why we, when we finally stopped smoking and could taste food, we ate so much food. <laughs> All I'm trying to tell you is a blessing to be.
Spirit of Jesus. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 but blessed. And I know oftentimes those who've been diagnosed with cancer, after they start taking treatment, they can't taste the fruit. Mm -hmm. But even in the midst of that, they're still blessed because they still hear the evil taste. <laughs> Jesus said, In this world, you're going to have trouble. Yeah. Yeah. If you follow me, you're going to have trouble. You, you know the Father is going to have trouble. Right. You're going to have to listen to it. be worth something. Right. Amen. He said, you're going to have trouble, but he says, be a good cheer. Yeah. For I have overcome this world. There's nothing in this world can defeat a child of God. Amen. 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 If you walk with Jesus. Amen. But not only does he talk about a character and unity <laughs> from the Message of the Lord's Supper, a broken, uh, a, a, a broken but blessed life. But he also talks about uh, a man, uh, a, a gracious God. Gracious God, yes, he is. He's a gracious God. Amen. Lamentation said, Every day we wake up, mm -hmm. we have new mercies. New mercies. Every day we've got new mercies. Thank God for his mercy and Amen. his grace. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was gracious to Judas. Yes. He didn't tell it. He's gracious to every one of us. Because yes. well, there's some things about us he ain't told nobody. Well, yes. Amen. That only you and God know. Amen. But if he wants to, he can pull the cover off anytime he got it. Yes. Yes. He can reveal those things that you think are secret. Yes, he can. Have mercy, Lord. Yes, he can. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but lastly, I don't want to keep you out of saying it on this show. He talks about, in Matthew, uh, a, a returning, returning redeemer. Yeah, thank you, Lord. That's part of the message. That's part of the message of the Lord's Supper. Jesus said to those disciples in that upper room, he said, listen, I've been desiring to eat this, message, this, this meal with you. And why did he desire to eat it? Because he knew that this was his last setting. Yeah. And once he ate, it was all but over. Amen. He was going to the cross. Yeah. And he was going to pay our sin debt. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You. Amen. And so in paying that sin debt, he says, I want you to remember this. He said, he, he, he established the first uh, Lord's Supper, if you will, because the here before it was the Passover. That's right, that's right. But now it's become the Lord's Supper. Amen. Because Jesus is the Paschal Lamb. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Not an Old Testament lamb, a, a, a lamb, as it were, but Jesus himself. Will be the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. I desire to eat it, but he said, Listen, I won't eat it no more down here. But he said, Till I eat it with you in the kingdom. And so he says, As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you'll remember my death until I what? Till I come again. He's coming again, y'all. Yes, he is. Yes, he Matthew 24 and 44 said, Since we don't know exactly when he's coming, we ought to be ready. Be Therefore, he says, Be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man will come. This supper reminds us to be ready. Amen. We don't know when he's coming, but we believe he's coming. Amen. He is coming again. Amen. And when he comes, we want to be ready. Yeah. I want to be ready. Yeah. Walking in Jerusalem. Yeah. Dressed like you. Yeah. I want to be ready when he comes again. Yeah. I, I, I can't be ready if Jesus is not my foundation. Yeah. If Jesus is not my all in all, I can't be ready. Yeah. If Jesus is not my priority in life, if he's not one in one, my number one, I can't be ready. 
when he comes again. I heard the hymn writer say, uh, on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. all of the ground is seeking sand. When he shall come, when trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. That's in his righteousness alone, faultless. I wish I could preach that. Faultless to stand before thy throne. Oh, Christ, the solid rock, all of the ground is. The Bible is very clear yeah, yeah. about the message of communion Amen. and why we need Jeez. to continue it on a regular, ongoing basis. Amen. 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 And I challenge us today, let's not be flippant when it comes to the thoughts about the communion. Yeah. The communion serves a dynamic purpose. Amen. And if we're going to be ready when Christ returns, we're going to have to be active participants on the Lord's supper. Amen. This is no shallow uh, uh, act. This is no shallow practice. This is very significant yeah. in the body of Christ. Amen. 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 It has a message to proclaim, to proclaim, as a message to proclaim. And it has a message of a remembrance. Yeah. He says, this do in remembrance of me. Yeah. Amen. 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 He died yes, for every one of us. Amen. And you can be recipients of his death, burial, and resurrection by simply making it personal. Yeah. He died for everybody. Yeah. But only those who receive his death will it become efficacious. Yes. Right. Otherwise, his death does you no good. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you recognize that his death was for you and you receive it for yourself, yes. then you can be saved. Amen. Amen. Never been more liberated in all my life. Yeah, yeah. That's when I realized yeah. I didn't have to keep myself. Yeah. Don't have to. Hey. Never been so liberated in my life when I knew when he, when I discovered that when he forgave me, yeah. they were not only for past sins, yeah. but they were present sins. Yeah. But not only past and uh, present, but for future sins. Yeah. 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 His blood is covered. I'm covered. Are you covered today? I'm covered until Jesus comes again. Let's remember what this table is all about. Amen. 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 Those of the church home. Y'all pray for me. Seriously, y'all pray for me. I hope you understand that 